Hi, we're going to take a look at electric power. Now, if you recall from earlier this year, power is energy per time. And electrical energy, we learned, was charge times voltage. So if we make a little substitution over there, we would get that power is charge times voltage over time. Now if you group these two together, the charge per time, charge per time is current. So when the dust all settles, you've got that power is current times voltage. And this is going to be an extremely handy formula for us. Anytime we need to deal with electrical power, we'll use this formula. And like we learned earlier in the year, the unit for power is the watt. So if we're talking about a 60 watt light bulb, a 60 watt light bulb is a light bulb that uses 60 joules of energy per second. Because remember, a watt and a joule per second are equivalent. Now, if we combine this power formula with Ohm's law, we can get a couple variations on it that are useful. If power is current times voltage, we learn that voltage is current times resistance, and we could substitute that in there. So we would get power is current times voltage, but for voltage, I'm going to put current times resistance, which would simplify to power is current squared times the resistance. Also, I could solve this for current, which is voltage over resistance, and make a similar substitution. So I'm going to actually put a box here, because that's a form of this equation that we like to use. And we'll do the other one over here. So if power is current, and for current we're going to substitute voltage over resistance times voltage, then power becomes voltage squared over resistance. So if I had the power and the resistance, I want to know the voltage, I'd use this formula. If I had two of these and I wanted to know the third, I'd use this one, and so forth and so on. Let's do an example or two. Calculate the resistance of a 40 watt automobile headlight designed for 12 volts. Okay, so let's write down what we have. The power is 40 watts and the voltage is 12 volts, and we're supposed to find the resistance. We did come up with a form of the equation that had just these three, and there it is. Power is voltage squared over resistance. So let's solve it for resistance by multiplying both sides by R and dividing both sides by P, and we get resistance is voltage squared over power. Now we can put the numbers in and we're going to have 12 volts squared over 40 watts and that is going to come out to 3.6 ohms. Pretty simple. A typical lightning bolt can transfer 10 to the 9 joules of energy across a potential difference of 5 times 10 to the 7 volts during a time interval of about 0.2 seconds. What is the A, total amount of charge transferred between cloud and ground, B, the current in the lightning bolt, and C, the average power delivered over 0.2 seconds? Okay, so part A, we're looking for the amount of charge. We know that the potential energy is equal to the charge times the voltage, and we're given the energy up there, and we have the voltage right down next to it. So if we solve that for charge, charge is going to be potential energy over voltage. And putting in the numbers, we have 10 to the 9 joules and 5 times 10 to the 7 volts. That's going to give us a charge of 20 coulombs. For part B, we need to know the current. And current is defined as charge per time. So if we take that charge that we just calculated of 20 coulombs and divide it by the time of 0.20 seconds, 
we're going to get 100 amperes. And finally, what's the power? And the power here will just go straight up with power equals current times voltage. And we have a current of 100 amperes and a voltage of 5 times 10 to the 7 volts, which is going to give us 5 times 10 to the 9 watts, otherwise known as 5 gigawatts. That is a lot of power.